So, first things first, where is Sudan? Sudan is a country located in northeastern Africa. It is the third largest country in Africa, uh, bordered by Egypt to the north, uh, Libya to the northwest, Chad to the west, the Central African Republic to the southwest, South Sudan to the south, Ethiopia to the southeast, and Eritrea to the east. Sudan is important globally for many reasons. Number one, its geopolitical location. Sudan is strategically located in Northeast Africa with access to the Red Sea and the Nile River. It shares borders with several other countries, including Egypt, Libya, Chad, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and the Central African Republic. This location has made it an important crossroads for trade and transportation in the region. Number two is natural resources. Sudan is rich in natural resources, including oil, gas, gold, silver, copper, uranium, zinc, and iron ore. These resources have made Sudan an attractive destination for foreign investment and have contributed significantly to the country's economy. Number three is agriculture. Sudan has a large agricultural sector with fertile land and ample water resources from the Nile River. The country is one of the world's largest producers of gum arabic, a valuable ingredient in many food and cosmetic products. Sudan is also a major producer of cotton, sesame and other valuable crops. Number four is the culture and history. Uh, Sudan has a rich cultural and historical heritage with ancient civilizations dating back thousands of years. The country has numerous archaeological sites such as the pyramids of Meroe and is home to many diverse ethnic groups, uh, each with their own unique traditions and customs. And number five, of course, is peace and stability. Sudan has been plagued by civil wars and conflicts in recent decades, but the country is now trying to transition to a more stable and peaceful future. The signing of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement in 2005 and the subsequent independence of South Sudan in 2011 have paved the way for a more inclusive and democratic Sudan. The country's stability is seen as crucial for the overall stability of the region. Just as it is the case with almost every former European colony, Sudan has not known much peace or prosperity since it was colonized. So on the 9th of July 2011, South Sudan became an independent country after a long history of conflict and political tension with the northern part of Sudan. But the root causes of the com conflict between the two regions can be traced back to colonial times when Sudan was part of the British-Egyptian condominium. During that period, the British and Egyptians implemented policies that favoured the North, which led to the marginalisation of the South. So even after Sudan became independent in 1956, tensions continued to rise between the North and the South, largely due to economic, political and cultural differences. The north, which was predominantly Muslim, Arabic-speaking and located along the Nile River, controlled the central government and most of the country's resources. While the south, which was mainly Christian, animist and located in the periphery, felt marginalized and neglected by the central government. In 1983, the Sudanese government imposed Islamic law on the whole country, including the largely non-Muslim south. This led to a civil war that lasted for more than two decades, during which an estimated 2 million or 20 lakh people were killed and 4 million were displaced from their homes and ancestral lands. The conflict ended in 2005 with the signing of the Comprehensive Peace Agreement or the CPA, which granted the South autonomy and the right to vote in a referendum on independence. In 2011, the people of South Sudan voted overwhelmingly for independence from Sudan, with more than 98% in favour of secession. The new country was officially recognised by the international community and South Sudan became the world's newest nation. However, the country has faced numerous challenges since its independence, including internal conflict, economic instability and humanitarian crises. Sudan is currently experiencing political and military unrest. An armed conflict began in April 2023 when a rivalry between Sudan's top two generals erupted into warfare, pitting the military against a state-sponsored militia called the Rapid Support Forces or the RSF. 
the military is using jet fighters to strike RSF positions while both factions are engaging in street battles using guns and artillery fire, trapping millions of Sudanese in their homes without food or water. The conflict has resulted in the deaths of at least 459 people and the injury of more than 4,000 others. The conflict is a power struggle between Sudan's military ruler and head of the army, Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, and General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, the country's deputy and head of the RSF paramilitary group. The hostilities are the culmination of what both parties view as an existential fight for dominance. The key question they're literally battling out is who would be subordinate to whom under the new hierarchy. The conflict has geopolitical implications for US foreign policy and for competition for influence in the region between Russia and the United States and between regional powers who have courted different actors in Sudan. Sudan's neighbors, Egypt and South Sudan, have offered to mediate, but that has so far done little to help the imbroglio we have on our hands today. And the current conflict in Sudan is a result of a rivalry between Sudan's top two generals, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, the commander of the military, and Lieutenant General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, who leads the Rapid Support Forces, the RSF, a state-sponsored militia. The two factions joined forces in 2019 to oust Sudan's longtime dictator Omar al-Bashir following months of popular protests. However, the relationship between the two generals deteriorated after they defeated their common enemy, leading to the current conflict that erupted on April 15, 2023. The conflict has resulted in the deaths of hundreds of people and has left millions of Sudanese trapped in their homes without food or water. It is worth noting that Sudan's post-independence history has been dominated by political and civil strife and most commentators have attributed the country's recurring civil war either to an age-old racial divide between Arabs and Africans or to recently colonially constructed inequalities. Mm -hmm. However, the current conflict is a result of a power struggle between the military and the RSF and not a result of ethnic or racial tensions. As of April 29, 2023, the death toll from the clashes between the Sudanese army and the rapid support forces has risen to 528 with thousands injured. However, on April 19, 2023, the United Nations' World Health Organization reported that the death toll has reached at least 270 with the majority of the casualties being civilians. The Sudan Doctors' Syndicate, a domestic organization that monitors casualties, reported that at least 174 civilians had been killed and hundreds more wounded. The death toll is likely to be considerably higher as bodies still lay on the streets in major cities where intense fighting continues. The Indian presence in Sudan can be traced back to the early 19th century when Indian traders and workers migrated to the region. Many Indians were employed in the construction of the Sudanese railway system, which was built by the British in the early 20th century. During the colonial period, Indians were brought to Sudan as laborers, clerks and professionals. They were considered to be a valuable source of skilled labor and they contributed significantly to the country's economic development. In addition, many Indian traders established businesses in Sudan, which further enhanced their presence in the country. After Sudan gained independence from Britain and Egypt in 1956, many Indians left the country. However, a significant number of Indian expatriates remained in Sudan and continued to contribute to the country's economy and society. Many Indians were involved in the development of Sudan's infrastructure, particularly in the areas of transportation, telecommunications and construction. In recent years, there has been a growing Indian expatriate community in Sudan, particularly in the capital city of Khartoum. Indian professionals and entrepreneurs have established businesses in a variety of sectors, including IT, healthcare and hospitality. Additionally, many Indian workers are employed in the oil and gas industry, which is a major contributor to Sudan's economy. Operation Kaveri is an evacuation operation launched by India to rescue its citizens stranded in Sudan due to the ongoing conflict between the country's army and paramilitary force. 
The operation was launched in the last week of April and a ship named INS Sumedha was sent to evacuate the stranded Indians. About 3,000 Indians were estimated to be stranded in Sudan when the conflict broke out. As of April 30, 2023, about 500 Indians have reached Port Sudan and more are on their way. This operation is named after the Kaveri River which flows through the Indian states of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. The Indian Air Force played a crucial role in Operation Kaveri, India's evacuation mission to rescue its citizens stranded in Sudan. The Indian government has been taking its citizens in buses from the conflict zones of Khartoum and other troubled areas to Port Sudan, from where they are being taken to Jeddah in the Indian Air Force's heavy lift transport aircraft. The Indian Air Force's C-130J flight has been used to evacuate stranded Indians from Sudan. The Indian Air Force pilots have performed daring maneuvers to airlift stranded Indians from the airship in Sudan's Wadi Sedna, which had no navigational approach, aids or fuel and landing lights. Uh, the Indian Air Force's transport aircraft and the Indian Navy's ships have been used to bring back stranded Indians from Sudan despite the ongoing conflict between the country's army and paramilitary force. The teams involved in Operation Kaveri, India's evacuation mission to rescue its citizens stranded in Sudan, have faced immense challenges. The mission has faced hurdles such as negotiating with the warring factions to ensure the safe passage of its citizens, particularly to safer zones within Khartoum. The Indian government has been taking its citizens in buses from the conflict zones of Khartoum and other troubled areas to Port Sudan, about 800 kilometers away from Khartoum, and from Port Sudan they are being taken to Jeddah in Saudi Arabia in the Indian Air Force's heavy lift transport aircraft and the Indian Navy's ships. The mission has been successful in bringing back stranded Indians from Sudan despite the ongoing conflict between the country's army and paramilitary force. However, the mission is still ongoing and the teams involved are likely to face more challenges as they continue to evacuate Indians from Sudan. As of April 30, 2023, the success rate of Operation Kaveri, India's evacuation mission to rescue its citizens stranded in Sudan, has been positive. The mission has completed more than 12 rounds of repatriations and as of April 30, 1,954 Indians have been brought back home from Sudan. Thanks for watching guys. Please keep those likes and comments coming and while you're here, please subscribe and check out one of our other videos on geopolitics and current affairs. Bye.